Happy holidays. Ho, ho, ho. Now please welcome your host of Bombing Run, General A.A. Ron. Thank you. I'm General A.A. Ron. And it's time for everyone's favorite comedian game show, Bombing Run. Yeah. And the rules for Bombing Run are simple. Each comedian combatant does their five-minute set, while the mysterious comedian judge will be looking for their setup punch and their appearance in front of a live studio audience. Warning combatants. If you say the F or C word, say the F bomb will come bomb your set, and you can't beat pick Joker Ace. All right? Two new rules from Bombing Run Command. If you leave more than 25 seconds on the clock, you'll be considered a dud, and you can't beat Joker Ace. If you go over your time, you'll set okay. off the time bomb, and you'll be not Joker Ace as well. So uh, please welcome my mysterious comedian judge tonight, Eden a Cookie. Everybody give me up, <laughs> Eden a Cookie. Yeah, Eden a Cookie. Uh, apparently, Woo! they're following Santa Claus at every house they hit. So if you happen to see someone dressed up looking like Santa, and they're not Santa, it's Eden a Cookie. <laughs> All right, that's who that is. So let's meet our comedian combatants for game number one, shall we? Let's go up to contestant number one. Yeah. What up, what up? This is Brian Polk from Cleveland, Ohio. Feels good to be back on bombing. All right, now contestant number two. Hi, my name is Athena Rodriguez, and I'm from San Jose, California. Sweet, and now contestant number three. Hey everyone, I am Rob, the Irony Man Block. I'm from Sunnyvale, California, and it's great to be here on my virgin bombing run. All right. These comedic combatants are going to do battle on the game show known as Bombing Run, and this is a holiday version, and so it's going to be a fun time tonight. But comedians, to your battle stations. Comedians, to your battle stations. We're going to get this game started off with our first comedian combatant, Please give it up for Ryan Polk, everybody. Yeah. Oh, man. What is going on, everybody? Man, it feels good. I'm here on my off night. And I ain't going to lie, I'm a little bit tipsy right now. I mean, has anybody else been drinking tonight? No. I mean, <laughs> all right. I mean I've been drinking my favorite, Crown Vanilla. Now, normally I get it with Coke, but I snorted it before I came on here. Mm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Y'all smell that? Is it me or do it smell like do it smell like some some wet ass with with with, with, with a period on it? Nice. Oh. 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 Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Bang. Me and my girl, you know, we was getting busy. You no, know, I, I wanted to give her a little early Christmas present. But, you know, instead, she had left me these. Mm -hmm. So, wait, let me go ahead and get these back to her. She likes to her on the side. Uh -huh. No. And speaking, you know, speaking of periods, you know, I do think that, I do think Rudolph was a nympho. Because, why else do you think he had that red nose? Oh! I mean, probably because he was eating them girls out while they was on their period. You know, he was lipping their wopsicle while they was on their period. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. But anyway, no, I'm Ryan Polk, and I ain't gonna even lie to y'all. Y'all been looking at me kind of weird since I done logged <laughs> on to here. No, I know, I know, I look, I know, I sound, I kind of sound like you know, like Carlton Banks from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You know, with the addition, I look like a pudgy Ninja Turtle with my Sally Jesse Raphael glasses on. Mm-hmm. And you know y'all kind of, if I uh, y'all kind of remind me of the cast to get out too. No offense, since I'm the only brother on here. Oh, ho, 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 ho. hey. <laughs> and speaking of speak, oh, say, so, oh, 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 I love that laugh, man. You know, I was Santa Claus this this past weekend, and you no, know, the ladies, you no, know, they kept on, they kept on. A lot of them wanted me to keep the costume on because they said they loved themselves. You know, a light skinned Santa Claus. No, they want me to smash. Uh, even one, one even told me that they said she said she wanted me to smash on her. Ho ho ho! You know what I mean. Mm. But you know it. But you know, I, I told her, I told her I would. You know, once I get done. And 
back to me speaking all proper. You know, as long as I talk like this and even dress like this, I'm going to always be that black man with a job if I do phone interviews. <laughs> uh, recently had one with Cracker Barrel, and everything was going good up until they had me cut on my, my dang on Zoom camera. And as soon as they took one good, as soon as they saw me, they took one good look at me. And, you know, they was, you know, and my managers, they were white, too. They was like. Sir, you're not exactly the cracker we are looking for. <laughs> we're more into the saltine, not the gram. Ooh. And not no Teddy Graham with your pudgy ass, with your pudgy light skin ass at that. So application chalked. Hmm. <laughs> So, you know, also in case if you guys haven't noticed, my forehead, it's not big. It's just wide as hell. <laughs> my cousin tells me I look like Tyra Banks' undeclared son with this. <laughs> and after Thanksgiving dinner is the worst because it's considering the fact that Thanksgiving was recently, you know, we like to be old school. So, and we and we be liking to, you know, we, we be liking to be old. We like to watch home videos on the projector. But instead, this asshole has everybody gather around me and project the home videos off my shit. Mm. <laughs> but I go in on him, too, because he's dark as hell. Dude is so black that when he was a baby, you would have thought he was a member of the California Raisins. No! <laughs> when he brushes his teeth, he looks like a York Patty. <laughs> Uh, and he better not shave that bird's nest on top of his head because he knows I'm going to call him an eight ball. I'm Ryan mm -hmm. Polk, man. You guys have been good. I'm out. I'm done. All right. Let's give it up for Ryan Polk, everybody. And Ryan, where can we find you on social media? On Facebook and YouTube, Ryan Polk. Instagram, at rpolk, the Taurus, like the bull. And on TikTok, at entertainer Taurus. All right, go check him out on those social links. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Mysterious Judge, eating a cookie. It, uh, what do you mean you need to knock over on Mrs. Fields? That's. Are you ready for the next comedian? You can't talk with your mouth full. Okay. All right. Oh, you are? Oh, good. All right. That would be awesome. So let's welcome our next comedian combatant up to the stage. Let's give it up for Athena Rodriguez, everybody. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Hello, everyone. Hi, my name is Athena. Uh, I was named after a Greek goddess of war, wisdom, and home crafts. Because uh, that sounds cool. Sounds very cool. Um, a lot of people ask how I was named after a Greek goddess. And uh, it's not a cool story. Was, my dad was actually reading a Greek mythology book while pooping on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> my full name is actually Athena Sudoku Rodriguez. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. I, like it. Uh, I I don't I don't mind being named athena but my nickname kind of sucks like everybody in my family has a really cool nickname uh except for me um like i have a cousin memo a tia mari an uncle tito and uh, my nickname is peanuts uh -huh. <laughs> uh that one that one is actually a cute story if you ask my dad if you ask my dad he says mija the first ultrasound we took of you you were shaped like a little peanut mm. <laughs> but if you ask my mom, she just says you were born salty. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like it. Mm. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So Christmas is coming up, and um, money's been tight in my family, so we're we're going for the homemade Christmas gifts. Ooh, so, yeah, homemade <laughs> Christmas gifts. Uh, so, um, everything's been pretty cool. I, I, I can pretty much make anything out of nothing. Uh, but my grandma asked for a new vibrator. 
And I was cool, cool. You're so progressive, grandma. You're so progressive. That's great. Mm. Uh, and then I realized how much a vibrator actually costs. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to the dollar store and I got an electric toothbrush. <laughs> and then I bedazzled it. Look, I don't think my grandma's going to like it, but I know her gynecologist is going to get me a thank you note. I know it. Uh, 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 she'll smile more i feel like uh, it the only problem uh, i have is uh with homemade gifts you can't really make everything like my teenager wants a new car oh, oh. so i figure i'll just make it out of my old car <laughs> <laughs> when money's tight around christmas like things change about you you know, you, you kind of like get low expectations. Like my love language used to be receiving gifts. Mm -hmm. But now it's more like uh, acts of service. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Now when like somebody does like a really kind gesture, you know, I get extra horny. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that like by this time next year, I won't be like, you know, changing my love language to something like, you know, words of affirmation. Like, you're not going to die. <laughs> uh. It's going to be great. Um, when I was younger, my dad had decided to go from Catholicism to Christianity. Mm. And then he ruined Halloween for us because we weren't allowed to celebrate it after that. Oh, and I thought that was bad until Christmas came along. Hmm. And the way he ruined it was he said, Miha, Santa doesn't exist. It was oh. me all along. Oh. And I was like, you know, it's really, it's really weird, Dad, that, you know, that God is not okay with Christmas, but he's totally okay with you doing drugs. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty strange. Pretty mm -hmm. strange. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm wow. I'm still okay with him. The last Christmas gift he got me was a taser, oh. and I like that. I like that, but it takes me really long to take it out of my purse. So uh, the only person I've ever tased with it is myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be like that sometimes, right, though? It'd be like that. My name is Athena Rodriguez. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. All right. Let's give it up for Athena Rodriguez. Right. And Athena, right. where can we find you on social media? You can find me at She Shines For You, all spelled out, no numbers, on Instagram. All right. That's awesome. Go check her out on those social media links. And, uh, yeah, home, you know, you have to build uh, your Christmas pet. Uh, presence that's crazy uh but can't imagine me building an xbox it would be uh mm -hmm. just made out of wood and just uh maybe out of my ex's uh parts or belongings i guess i don't know all right that was a bad joke i guess <laughs> i'm not doing the jokes you guys are i'm general aaron i am the official bomber of bombing run um but my wife did get me pepper spray for christmas and boy did that hurt <laughs> all right eating a cookie are you ready for the next uh comedian combatant for the night yeah you are all right you're just finishing up an oatmeal raisin cookie oh good so let's welcome our third comedian combatant for the night let's give it up for rob irony man block everybody yeah Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. All right. It's so, so good. So good to be here for the first time. Hope you guys are having a good day. Um, so uh, my first time here. So uh, a little bit about me. I, I am Irony Man. My pronouns are he, him. My verbs are smash and grab. Uh, and my adjectives are drunk and delusional. <laughs> now, uh, since this is this, this is our holiday show, um, I've got a uh, I'm proud to say i have a, a new holiday sponsor and uh in fact i i'm, I'm gonna do i have to do a commercial for them mm. i've had a really rough week first the golf tournament in catalina got rained out <laughs> then my private jet had engine trouble i had to fly commercial mm. i got pulled over doing 90 in a school zone the cop 
cop left let me off with a warning, but you know, I'm still traumatized by the experience. And uh, oh, and yesterday the maid couldn't come. Uh, she said her kid needed a transplant. When life gets me down, I I pour myself a glass of the one drink that's guaranteed to lift me back up. White privilege. Oh, no. <laughs> white privilege is the is the, is the liqueur for people who were born on third base and think they hit a triple. This hol <laughs> this holiday season, don't check your privilege. Drink it. Oh. <laughs> so uh, a little more about me. Uh, I'm married and happily married for for 22 years. What? And my yeah, and my wife is is such a lucky lady because I'm I'm a really big spender. Not 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 ashamed to admit that. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, it was our anniversary last month, and I took my wife to the most expensive food truck in in Silicon Valley. Um, <laughs> you, you know, you know how uh, re you've been. To, you know how restaurants have Michelin stars, right? Mm -hmm. This food truck had three Michelin tires. Uh... No. Uh, my wife's a scientist. She uh, she does research uh, on synthetic biology. Ooh. I, I don't I, I don't know anything about that. All, all I know is that it, it it messes up our sex life because uh, I can never tell when she's faking an organism. <laughs> now, you know I, I love my wife, but uh, I do have one pet peeve about her, uh, which is that uh, she she's a total whore. <laughs> uh, sorry some uh, some of that white privilege went down the wrong pipe um oh. what was i saying um oh yeah m my wife uh yeah she's she's a total hoarder i mean we're talking like 40 pairs of shoes boxes of vhs tapes and don't and don't don't get me started on all the other guys she's sleeping with that's kind of a sore subject <laughs> yeah mm. uh, to total hoarder um, oh. so, so for we're spending the holidays in San Antonio this year. Um, it's a little bittersweet. My uh, my uncle Mervin uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what's more disturbing about the situation: the fact that he has Alzheimer's, or the reason the Texas State Medical Board gave for the diagnosis. He can't remember the Alamo. <laughs> so I'm telling you, like, I mean, he's so broken up about it. Like he tried, he tried to kill himself, uh, oh. you know, he, old, <laughs> old school, very old school guy. He, uh, he went to the garage. He um, got a, uh, brought a big roll of duct tape, sealed up the doors and windows, got in his car, turned it on and went to sleep. Ooh. And then he woke up yeah. in the morning and he was, he was fine. My uncle drives a Tesla uh, they they don't they don't work that way, um, and and I I called I, you know I I I told him like look man like what what the hell is the matter with you? Te uh, Tesla developed an automotive feature designed to help people commit suicide. It's called autopilot. You know, get oh. get with the program, man. <laughs> um, so um, I'll I'll uh, all right. I'll leave you with this. Uh, you know, Jeff Bezos. He's at it again. He he bought the entire chain of massage parlors in San Jose. Oh, not happy about this. Well, you know, there's good news and bad news. Good news is a uh, twenty percent price cut on all services, uh, but the bad news: uh, happy endings are self service. So, oh. what are you gonna do? All right, um, I've been Irony Man. Thanks, thanks so much for listening to me, and uh, have a happy holidays. All right, let's give it up for Rob Irony Man Block, everybody. Yeah. Uh, Irony Man, where can we find you on social media? Um, I'm on I'm on Facebook. Just look just look me up by name. Uh um YouTube, Rob Block Comedy. Um, and uh I'm on I'm on Substack as well under under my name. Uh those are the main ones. All right, go check him out on those social media links and on Substack. Who I am, I looked that up one time. I just didn't think I was up. So I think I was subpar for that. All right, uh, now it's going to be up to our mysterious comedian judge tonight to decide who is Joker Ace for game number one. Do you have any idea of eating the cookie? Eat. What do you mean the double stuffed Oreos are great?
That, no, I need to know who's the uh, Joker Ace for game number one. I'll take you to the grocery store afterwards and you can buy all the Chips Ahoy you want. Apparently they're getting ready for Christmas. So, who is it? All right, I got it, I got it. Our comedian who is Joker Ace for game number one is... Rodriguez, everybody! Yeah! You're gonna Yay. see on Dogfight Edition right after game two. So be prepared, be ready, and we're going to be on the game number two right after this. You're watching Bombing Run! Home of Freddy the F-Bomb! <laughs> right here on DBTV. In 1943, the Allies were losing the war. General Douglas A. MacArthur ordered the creation of Joke Force a small group of stand-up comedians who would parachute behind enemy lines to kill the advancing army with jokes. Their missions were known as bombing. Some comedians killed, while others died on the battlefield stage. The joke force was disbanded right after the Laughing Stock Peace Treaty was signed. Today, their mission lives on as the game show Bombing Run, hosted by General A.A. Rock. Bombing Run! Light. Stay tuned, game number two is coming right up of Bombing Run! Right here on DBTV. Oh my right. goodness! It's time for game number two of Bombing Run! Yes! And we're gonna meet our comedic combatants for game number two. Let's meet contestant number one! Hey guys, I'm Chris Crawford out of San Angelo, Texas. All right, and now let's meet contestant number two. Hi, I'm Paul, and it's the it, I, I we don't need to know where I am. All right, <laughs> and now contestant number three. I'm Kendra Karbowski, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. All right, these comedian combatants will be doing battle on the game show known as Bombing Run. So, Comedian Combatants to your battle stations. Comedian Combatants to your battle stations. We're going to get started right off with our first Comedian Combatant of game number two right now. Please welcome to the stage, Chris Crawford, everybody. Yeah! Oh, my God. Happy, uh, Merry Christmas, Bombing Run. It is that season. The season for Elf on the Shelf. I have one. Uh, lots of people across America have them. And they come up with all these crazy things for them to do for 25 straight days. They have some weird activity, some IG, Facebook-worthy activity. I do not. Nobody has time or energy for all of that. I just play hide-and-seek with that damn thing. And I put it – every night I move it and move it and move it just night after night. And my kid loves it, tries to find it. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you – where the real panic sets in or the nightmare is when you go to sleep at night because you're tired and you wake up and your eyes pop open at two in the morning. You're like, I didn't hide the elf. And of course, you jump out of bed and you're naked because that's that's what you do. You get naked and get in bed. Now you jump out of bed and you have no clothes on. All the lights are off and like a ninja, you don't bother to get dressed because that would be silly. So instead, like a ninja creeping through the darkness, you're trying to get to where you need to get to that elf. And then, of course, being super quiet, you hit that ottoman and want to cuss and scream, but you can't. You just go flat against the wall, ass cheeks <laughs> against the paint. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and then you reach up and you grab that elf and you move it over. And you put it somewhere else. And then you ninja walk back to bed. And then you get under those covers. And you close your eyes. Knowing that you can rest easy. Having accomplished the most important task in that house. During this season. You hid the elf. A game you wish you could play with your wife. But not tonight. <laughs> now. The real problem with having an elf on the shelf and also having older children in the house is the older children in the house like to make the elf do really adult, grown-up things. Mm. You know, like doing taxes, no. paying <laughs> bills, <laughs> eating gummies. <laughs> yeah, gummies is the weird thing, right? Because, like, at the end, we have – America loves gummies, man. We take gummies for everything. Vitamin A, B, C, D, C. B, T, T, H, C, even mm -hmm. E, D. 
<laughs> if you have if you have a problem, whether it's in the bedroom or on the toilet, just take a gummy. See what comes out or comes up. Might just be a stocking stuffer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, now during Christmas, if your uh, Uncle Jimmy is sitting on the couch eating gummies, you should be concerned. Keep an eye on him. Mm. If little Jimmy is eating gummies, it's okay. It's kind of weird that way. But I'm going to also talk about Christmas is really another one of those food holidays where people do lots of cooking. And I do like to cook. But if you were to look at my dinner and the people who sit around me, you would think I was racist. That's not true. I have friends from every ethnic background. But they are the racist ones. They won't come and eat my food. It's like white people can't cook, like our seasoning isn't proper, right? I didn't realize how big of an issue this was until my oldest daughter stayed the night at a Spanish household, and they fed her. Sounds like a good thing. Was not. See, she came back to me, and I cooked pork chops, her favorite dinner. She's been eating my pork chops all her life. And she cut into those pork chops and took a bite. She said, Dad, you make white people pork chops. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I said, excuse me? She said, it's bland. It has no seasoning. That's not that's not good, Dad. And I said, and I thought, wow, I didn't know that was a problem. I mean, I thought I seasoned them. I mean, I used the universal seasoning, Lowry's. I put it on chicken. I put it on steak. I put it on pork. What? No, Dad. So I did what I thought I was I, I should do. I reached out to what I thought was the equivalent for the Spanish culture. It comes in the exact same bottle, except has a label that says adoba. Did that? She said, no, <laughs> that's not how it works, Dad. <laughs> I said, All right. Now I'll talk to I want to talk to you about um, my Asian friend. Um, my Asian friend, he's he said to me, he was baiting me, right? He wanted to make me out to be racist. So he said, you know, I eat rice every day. I said, that's awesome. I love rice. I make it in a steamer. I got a rice cooker. It's awesome. He said, no, we fry our rice. We put egg in it. We spice it. We mix it up. It's delicious. And I think that what he was really telling me was we don't eat that white people rice. <laughs> so guys, guess who's not coming over for Christmas dinner? Yes, it's going to be another white Christmas at the Crawford household. Oh, Merry Christmas, guys. All right, let's give it up for Chris Crawford, everybody. And Chris, yeah. where can we find you on social media? You can find me, uh, actually, just uh, YouTube is cool, so Chris Crawford's Comedy, or my website, chriscrawfordscomedy.com. And if you want to find me on Facebook, I'd love to add you as a friend. All right, thank you so much. That was awesome. Oh, my gosh. And I want his elves on the shelf at my house to do my taxes right now. <laughs> do some housekeeping that'd be great but you touch my edibles that's crossing the line <laughs> all right uh and you know what uh let's let's uh give a warm welcome again to our uh, mysterious community judge tonight eating a cookie uh who's fitting this uh judging of this show in between snacking on every cookie that santa claus isn't eating uh eating a cookie are you ready for the next comedian combatant All right, they are. They saying this uh, snickerdoodle is delicious, but yes, they're ready for the next comedian combatant. So welcome to the stage, our second comedian combatant for game number two. Give it up for Paul Kilmer, everybody. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Hey, everybody. It's me, Paul, coming to you live from lovely New England, which is a place that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's the holidays and everybody's angry for no reason whatsoever. And I, I don't do edibles. I do something else. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a magician. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I know. I don't like it either. I just uh, spent too much money on it. And I can't go back now. Um, <laughs> so the great, the great thing about being. Uh, a magician is I will uh, have the ability to make a situation even more awkward than it was at the beginning. And I'll show you how. 
I'll be out to dinner with my lovely fiance, Rebecca, who's told me on several occasions, please don't bring me up in your comedy, and I do anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one tells me what to do. Mm. Uh, and what happens is, is I will literally just do card tricks for the wait staff and ignore my fiance because I have autism. No. <laughs> yeah, if you don't laugh at my jokes... You're a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are a bad person, you weren't going to laugh anyway. That's not my problem. Mm. But yeah, I like to do this Rubik's Cube. It helps me with my social anxiety. If I just kind of squeeze it, I can get it to solve itself. Ooh. I know it's crazy. It's like a joke. Like it wasn't meant to happen. That was a sight gag, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. No, no, I'm just kidding. I can uh I can solve the Rubik's cube. All I got to do is put it in this bag so you can't see what I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap my fingers and I'm going to cause the Rubik's cube to solve itself. Ooh, ooh, yeah. That's not meant to be good. I don't plan on winning. I was definitely going to say the c word at the beginning, so I disqualified myself. But I thought I should try. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, nobody tells me what to do. <laughs> well, you might be thinking that there's another Rubik's Cube in the bag. There is, but uh, it's also solved because I can't let you win. I have low self-esteem. I hate myself. Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Mm. Everybody forgot about Hanukkah. And you need to look deep inside yourself for that. Oh. <laughs> you forgot them. Eating a cookie forgot about that. I'm pretty sure eating a cookie doesn't exist. But anyway, um, there's one more thing I like to do. You see, in the holidays, everybody gets stressed out. And uh, we forget about all those hardworking people who have to work during the holidays. Mm. I always go to my local McDonald's and I give them $5 gift cards because that's not enough to buy anything anywhere because I'm a bad person. <laughs> Every time I go to McDonald's, they always forget my straw, so it's even. How am I supposed to drink my drink in my car? I have to open up my uh, drink container with my stupid monkey thumbs that I spill it all over myself. Mm. Uh, it's Christmas time. You can smell the anger in the air. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's how I feel. I'm scared right now. Anyway. I already told you I'm going to disqualify myself because I want Athena to win. Oh. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, so I developed a um, uh, a straw that they can't forget. It looks like this. Holy, ah. wow. <laughs> yeah, somebody <laughs> mentioned, somebody <laughs> mentioned uh, erectile dysfunction, which... Is kind of what my username on the dark web is. So I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. And I want to show you that there's nothing in the bag. And if you want to get a hold of me, all you got to do is hop on the dark web and I'm there. Have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> all right. Let's give it up for Paul Kilmer, everybody. Yeah. yeah. And Paul, where can we find you on social media? Oh, the less you know about me is probably for the best, but you could probably find me at Paul Kilmer on Facebook. That's pretty much the easiest. And it's free, so, you know, I don't care. <laughs> All right. Hey, All right. Thank you so much, Paul. And let's give Paul a big round of applause. I mean, come on. He's one of the greatest music musicians. Magicians, I know. He might be musical, too. I'm pretty sure he is. But uh, he I wouldn't is a say that. Oh, I do my I best. I, I think you're an amazing uh, magician, and it was great to have him here. And maybe he can make presents appear underneath my tree. I'm hoping so, because I'm not getting anything for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Hey, uh, Aaron, yes. you're an adult. Just buy your own presents. You know, you're right. <laughs> but how do I surprise myself? Do I close my eyes as I'm wrapping the gifts? I don't know. Uh, eating a cookie. Are you ready for the next comedian combatant for the night? What do you mean you got to finish up those thin mint sleeves? 
Oh, okay. All right. You're ready for our third comedian combatant. All right. Let's introduce our third comedian combatant for game number two. Let's give it up for Kendra Karbowski, everybody. Yeah. Woo. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Hi. I'm the overly excited Christmas mom. And, you know, I just, your, your father said we should call you kids. We should call you on the Zumba and, and just make sure that you would text us before you leave so I can tell you what kind of weather you got and how you should drive to get here. And your father, what? What? How do I know where your Santa boxers are? For gravy's sake, go back and finish your project in the garage, yeah, father. I, I don't know what. <laughs> it's gone now. I got to tell you, I know where his boxers are. He wanted to greet you wearing these, but Whoa. there was no way I was going to let him do that. You know, he's just gotten a little bit off the edge. I mean, for one thing, he's paranoid about our little friend, the elf on the shelf. So Whoa. I got to hide him here, at least for now, because we were busy earlier and I know he won't go there. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, FYI, the, the Christmas tree is is naked, so you guys can do some decorating. I know how much you just love to do the tree. You do. Um, we actually <laughs> had it decorated, but uh, your father got a little energetic earlier underneath the tree. And, uh, well, to say the least, it went over. And, uh, well, we, we were still picking shards out of our skin. Whoa. Uh, you know, <laughs> Your your dad, he's uh now that he's retired, he's just cut a lot of energy. Way too much energy. And I think he's getting a little uh oversexed or something. Oh. I, I let him help with the Christmas cookies. And oh my goodness. Oh, I tell you, I gotta show you this. Can you can you see that there? Look at that. Look at that. Your father, whoa, she lost one. That's okay. Anyway. <laughs> I'll eat it later. I told him to just make some ginger girls and he got a little crazy. He did. Uh, don't worry. I've hit him away along with the boxers because uh, we know you're bringing your girlfriend and we're so glad we finally get to meet her. Uh, we were a little bit worried that she wasn't real. Mm. So, uh, yeah. And we got her set up in your room and uh, you're going to oh. bunk with your brother. Oh. Uh, don't worry. We won't tell her what you did. In, in your room, we've scraped the walls, done the black light, all that. Um, so speaking of your dad, uh, we are going to need you to help a little bit around the house because he has sprained the back. I think it had to do with the tree. Oh. Uh, we're we're going to need you to put in another one of those ceiling fans for us, but this time let's really reinforce it. Mm. Um, I, I told him it couldn't handle our his weight. <laughs> Don't worry, it's nothing weird. It's not one of those like sex swings. I've heard about that on the internet. Mm. Uh, you know, it's it's a thing that his uh, physical therapist prescribed. It's a back stretcher, and um, uh, he needs me to get in there with him to help him get on it. I don't know why we don't get to wear clothes. I tell you, <laughs> I've done everything I can. I I, I replaced his Viagra. Because he was, you know, getting a little too wild. I, I gave him some of your Adderall. I thought that might just help a little, but it seems to make him a little bit more zippity doo -dah, You know what I mean? <laughs> just a little, bit, a little bit more crazy. Oh, my goodness. I've got no clock. I'm just guessing. There we go. Anyway, um, I can now see it on Aaron's. What looks like 125. Not entirely sure. Hey, did I mention I have dyscalculia? I have no ability to do time. <laughs> <laughs> for numbers money my husband loves that so, anywho so i'm kendra karbowski and i am a comedian here in omaha nebraska and karbowski is a tough name so i thought i'm just gonna go be kendra k and then the first time they introduced me on the stage there was a little bit of a uh, misprint and they said welcome to the stage kendra what am i a magician like paul <laughs> I hope so. Oh, or maybe I'm a vampire. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm about as pale as a vampire. I definitely am. Uh, I definitely am a, a vampire. So I tell you, um, <laughs> I'd be skinnier. You know, it could be all these lovely cookies we've been baking around the house here. Mm. Oh, my goodness. I think this guy's getting fresh with me. He's going to have to go. <laughs> I, I got to go hide this guy. Anyway, you've been just lovely. I'm Kendra Karbowski.
All right, let's give it up for Kendra Karbowski. And Kendra, where can we find you on social media? Uh, Facebook at Y-E-R, Your Mom's Comedy Show, or at Kendra Karbowski, and that's K-A-R-B-O-W-S-K-I, just Karbo and a ski, or uh, on Instagram, Kendra.Karbowski. And uh, I've got a YouTube out there. I, I think it's just Kendra Karbowski. I'm not very creative with that. I figure the name's hard enough. If you've got it, good. <laughs> Don't look for Kendrick. You look for Kendrick. All right. Let's, all right. Let's give it up for Kendrick Karbowski, guys. That was amazing. That was awesome. And uh, maybe for your husband, you give him a half a Viagra and half an Adderall. So he'll be finishing. Concentrating? Con <laughs> concentrated, but fast. You know, like the old days. Like the old days. All oh, right. Gosh. Eat the, the cookie. Eat the cookie. You have the hardest job right now. You have to decide who's Joker Ace of game number two. Who is it? It's a... No, it, you can't... You can't... No, cookies can't win. Okay, I know who is... I had to talk to the, uh, the eating the cookie because apparently they had a lot of chocolate chip cookies in their hands and they typed in... Uh, blah, 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 blah. So that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. All right. Uh, so, Kameen, who is Joker Ace for game number two, is Chris Crawford, everybody. Be ready, Chris. You're going to be on Dogfight Edition right after this. And we're going we're gonna to get him and our Athena Rodriguez in Dogfight Edition right after these messages. Did your favorite comedian make it to Joker Ace? Are they going to be crowned top dog? How will you know? Keep watching Bombing Run right here on DBTV. All right, it's time for Dogfight Edition. Yeah! And our two Joker aces, Athena Rodriguez and Chris Crawford, are going to be facing off doing three-minute sets to see who's ace of aces tonight on the holiday edition of Bombing Run. So... Comedians, Joker Aces, to your battle stations, to your battle stations. And we're going to bring up our first Joker Ace of the night. Let's give it up for Athena Rodriguez, everybody. Yeah. Hello again. Hi. Um, so I'm trying really hard not to be uh, dropping F-bombs. I'm trying, I'm trying to be good. You know, my dad never went to any of my comedy shows because uh, he said, Miha, you cuss too much. And it's unattractive because mm. <laughs> that's what I want to be attractive to my father. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking weirdo. <laughs> um, <laughs> he always wanted a son. Um, my dad was a weird person. He was the kind of guy that if you watched a movie with him, he would talk through the whole movie. And then right at the really important parts, he'd be in your face like, Mio, what's happening? What are they doing? Right. <laughs> the only way to get him to be quiet through the whole movie is if there was like brief nudity in the movie or the scene. Ooh. Yeah, if there were boobs on the screen, he was super quiet. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I like to go up to him and be like, hey dad, what's happening? <laughs> what are they doing? Mm. Yeah. So yeah, he always wanted a son. I don't know what it is. It's like a big Mexican dad macho man thing they always want to leave behind a legacy my legacy mijo the rodriguez legacy that's what i need to leave behind and it was so confusing to me because i was like what's our legacy dad chronic ingrown toenails and diabetes <laughs> <laughs> driving without car insurance i can do it <laughs> i'm ready to carry this legacy <laughs> I miss my dad. I found out that um, during his funeral that his uh, legacy was that he taught a lot of my cousins and my family karate. Oh. Uh, yeah. It was like generations Ooh. upon generations of people in my family learned karate from my dad. Oh. And that blew my mind because he didn't know karate. <laughs> <laughs> During the holidays, the last time I went to a like a family holiday celebration, uh, I felt really old and dumb because 
I had a, a younger cousin there and she had her friend and her friend went into my face and she was like, yeah, I'm a pansexual. And I didn't mm. know what that was, but I didn't want her to know that I didn't know. So I tried to play it cool. And I was like, yeah, I like deep dish. <laughs> I don't go to any more family things. <laughs> You know, it sounds ridiculous. I'm okay with it, though, because the same thing happens. Every time I walk into a, the place, they're always like, oh, you got fatter. Mm. <laughs> My name is Athena Rodriguez. <laughs> Have a All nice right. night. <laughs> oh, let's give it up for Athena Rodriguez, everybody. Oh, my gosh. That was hilarious. Thank you so much, Athena. Uh, and, and you're invited to my family parties anytime. I want to be disinvited as fast as possible. I appreciate that. Just come on over. I'll be, a, I'll have, I'll be happy. Uh, eating a cookie, our mysterious comedian judge, everybody eating a cookie. Are you ready for our second Joker Ace of the night? It's hard to decide between oatmeal, raisin, snickerdoodle, and thin mint. It's not, are you ready for the next comedian? Okay, they are. All right, so please welcome to the stage our second comedian, uh, second Joker Ace for game number two. Please give it up for Chris Crawford, everybody. Yeah. Oh, Merry Christmas, Bomber and Run. Man, this is so, there's so many things come about in this season. I don't know if you know this, um, but Black Friday, yeah, that's already passed, but it is the, it's really the, kind of the kickoff, right? The Black Friday is the kickoff of the Christmas season. And Here's the deal, as I want you to know how dangerous it is. Now, everybody celebrates Shark Week, and, you know, it's a dangerous animal, and the alpha, whatever, right? They say that it's super deadly, whatever, because it's nothing, nothing compared to Black Friday. Because I don't, I don't know if you have checked the stats, but it is a true and 100% fact that more people die every year on Black Friday than sharks, than from sharks, in roughly a decade mm. all right one day black friday 10 years of sharks and sharks get their own damn week why can't we have a black week we have a black month i mean i'm sorry black appreciation <laughs> month but we we have only have one day that is black friday and that's very frustrating because it it, it really does warrant a lot more attention it's super dangerous that's all i'm saying mm. i mean black friday matters that's it. All right. Now I want to tell you when we move forward and we have our Christmas season and you're at the mall and you're celebrating Black Friday, please understand you're going to see these people with these crazy tables and they're gifted wrappers, as in they wrap gifts. Now, these gifted wrappers that wrap gifts, they are the pros. If you take your gifts to them and you pay them any amount of money, they will wrap it and make it cool and great. Now, be careful. When you're getting this done by a professional, when you go to a professional to get it done better, do not do that for your significant other. Oh. Because what's going to happen is they always know when you cheat, you can't turn to a pro and then go home to your wife. They know that you cheated. You'll offer the package. They'll take the package. They might shake the package. They will really look and examine the package, and they will know that you, my friend, went to a pro <laughs> who touched that package before they had a chance to touch it. Mm. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you appreciate what you have at home and you get that person a gift, don't turn to a pro because that package will then be tainted. <laughs> and they know, they always know, because they know that you aren't that good at presenting the package. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. I'm Chris Crawford. This was a lot of talk about presents. Stay in the present. Do not turn to a pro. Just give the package and hope that they take it graciously. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm Chris Crawford. All right, let's give it up for Chris Crawford, everybody. That was amazing. Oh, wow. That was so good. Oh, my gosh. And let's give it up for both of our joke races tonight. Athena Rodriguez and Chris Crawford, you did amazing tonight. Oh, my gosh. All right. Now, it is the toughest job on Bombing Run. Oh, and they have to decide who is Ace of Aces tonight. Is it Athena Rodriguez or Chris Crawford? And 
No. Double stuffed Oreos it wasn't on the show tonight. <laughs> I know. That's where the cookie crumbles there, uh, eating a cookie. You have to tell me who is Ace of Aces tonight. Okay. I know who's Ace of Aces tonight. Ace of Aces for Bombing Run Holiday Edition is... Athena Rodriguez, everybody! Yes! Oh. All right, you did amazing. And you get to do what we call a victory flyby, where you can thank the Academy, you can thank everybody, or you can do a 90-second set. It's up to you, but the clock is going to go now. Sweet. Thank you, everybody who attended the show and thought it was funny. Thank you to all the comedians who performed tonight. Thank you, Paul, for not disqualifying yourself by saying the C word. <laughs> I could still do it. <laughs> uh, thank you to uh, my dad uh, specifically for giving me all that content for being a horrible dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think I'm good. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right. That was awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, that was a great show. That was awesome. And let's give Athena Rodriguez one big round of applause again. <laughs> Because this game is tough. This game is one of the toughest games out there for comedians to play. And let's give it up for all our comedian combatants on tonight. Ryan Polk, Athena, Ron, Irony Man Block, Chris Crawford, Paul Kilmer, and Kendra Karbowski. You guys were playing a great game tonight. And let's give it up for our mysterious comedian judge tonight, eating the cookie, who had the toughest job besides, you know, judging the show, eating all those cookies that Santa is going to be regretting that he didn't get to eat. So for me, all the comedians and the mysterious comedian judge, this has been an oddly funny production. Thank you. This has been an oddly funny production.